I've, I've prepared nothing for this. Um, so, many years ago now, we introduced scoped um, GFP No Affairs, GFP No IO, and recently we've added a couple more scoped um, uh, scoped things for, you know, while I said GFP kernel, what I really meant was don't enter reclaim or don't start IO, whatever. Um, I know some people want to do GFP no fail. I know some people want GFP no wait. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that people want. But we haven't even finished the GFP NoFS <laughs> transition. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to talk about that, and I wanted to talk a little bit about Rust as well, because we want to be able to vendor in Rust libraries from outside. We don't want to have a special kernel implementation of a hash table, because why, why would we do that, right? But if you want a hash table, then you want to allocate memory. And if you want to allocate memory, right now you need GFP flags. And you need GFP flags because maybe you want to insert something into the hash from inside interrupt context. Or you are putting something into the page cache. Uh, you know, you've already got a locked page in the page cache. And, and so you can't enter reclaim. Um, and why the hell do we have to add GFP flags to every single Rust thing that we bring into the kernel? That's, that's crazy. Um, so I'm just kind of, I just, I just want to talk about it, like what, what, inter, what interface do file system people want to say, hey, don't go into reclaim? Um, because clearly the current interface isn't working out for any of you because none of you are using it. What would you use? What do you want? Oh, hey, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. What do, what, what do you want? <laughs> Everything. Dave wants everything. Okay. I have no idea. Uh, GFP NoFS and getting rid of it and. It's everything, yeah, <laughs> everything. Got it. I mean, honestly, I like the the memsave interface. I think that for ButterFS, we've tried to use it like going forward. Obviously, right? I think the problem, at least from my point of view, like I know you guys desperately want to get rid of GFP and NoFS. I have zero. Like, I don't give a shit, right? It's just like we still have a lot of cases where we have GFP flags. So, like, I go to use something new, and well, it's got a GFP flag, so I don't use the mem save. I just use the GFP flag, right? Um, but on the other end, so, like, your Rust example, like, is the first, like, first example that I've seen that, like, where the mem save thing really makes sense to me. Because, like, like you said, for everything we've got, GFP plumbed through everywhere. And generally speaking, we're going to be no FS everywhere, with the exception of like right at the front of sys calls or. Right. I mean, there's definitely places that we don't, but like where we don't generally, because I mean, we've been around, well, ButterFS and XFS and X4 have been around long enough that we have, we know where we need no FS. And. And it's like just kind of a solved thing. So like to me, it always felt like a, a solution and searchable problem. True, because we've been adding more vmlock fallbacks. Yeah, we, we've been adding more vmlock fallbacks. Like kvmlock is a relatively recent addition, and that's just moving more stuff to that has been a good thing. Uh, as I recall, vmlock doesn't pass through the GFP flags for one of its internal data structures. I don't remember which one. And I was going to fix that at one point. It might have been page tables. And Lena shot it down, uh, saying that uh, memlock flags were the way to go. Yeah, like, I have zero, like, I'll use it, right? Like, you tell me what to use, I'll use it. Um, and I think that the Rust is the first time that I've had, like, a good, like, a, a visible reason why I should be using these things. Every, but like I said, for the majority of things, like, vmalloc is a good example, but, like, ButterFS doesn't use vmalloc anywhere currently. As we start to use it, obviously we'll grow mem save stuff. Like if you tell me now, hey Joseph, I want to no longer have GFP flags and all of these things, please go change everything. Absolutely, sure, fine, I'll go happily do that for you. Um, it hasn't seemed like a, a pressing need, right? It's just like a thing that you guys always bring up, and it's like, yeah, okay, great. I mean, like I'll use it when I, you tell me to use it, but like, 
why would I when I have 90% of my shit that has GFPT in it, right? So when I was doing these conversions of GFP and OFS in a couple of places, like in, in EXT4 and Quota Code and, and in other places, the things that I was kind of, which made it kind of inconvenient in some cases, are there are two, two things. One is that currently with the scoped API, you basically from the entering of the context to get back cookie with you which you have to pass through to the like release thing uh, and often enough these acquire and release are in kind of very different parts of the code and passing through the cookie actually makes the code ugly possible to do i, I did it in all the cases but it, it's kind of ugly and you know makes the conversion more difficult and so that, that's one thing. The other thing uh, of kind of similar nature is that often the, like in a lot of the simple cases, let's say, the no FS state is bound to a particular lock. Yeah? So basically you have some kind of lock you grab and basically reclaim path needed as well. So this lock is effectively no FS. And so it's uh, now basically you, so basically now you have to transform any acquisition of this lock into usually a function call, which will grab the context, acquire the lock, return the cookie, then you propagate the cookie to the other hand, then you have to have special unlock function, which unlocks the lock and restores the context, yeah? Which is all kind of cumbersome for something seemingly trivial to do. Ideally, you would like to just mark, you know, this lock is no FS, so, and everything else is, else is kind of handled by some magic under the hood. Uh, so, this is kind of an abstract wish. Now we can discuss how this could be achieved. Yeah? But I believe this scope API would be much easier to transition to if we really had this support of mark this lock as, let's say, reclaim unsafe, and that's all the file system developer actually needs to do and all the other magic happens like in the generic code, essentially. Just, just to add to, to some of what he was saying before, uh, he was talking about the, the mechanism, the mechanics of actually using the scoped API, right? Uh, but just also this uh, other aspect of it, which is if you are actually using GFP flags, you are sort of forced to think about which flags you want to do because there, you are required to specify that. Whereas in the scoped case, you, there's nothing telling you that at that time you have to, to uh, enter that scope, for example. So it's very easy. It would be easier for people to forget to do that complicated thing that was saying, like, as, as I'm acquiring a lock, I have to remember to enter this scope. So my question to, to, to you guys, the experts, is can we actually come up with a way to know when we enter this, this scope and automatically uh, set this scope rather than having a manual uh, call to enter and another manual uh, call to, to leave? Would it be possible to detect uh, that uh, ideally at compile time, because um, then we could perhaps build something in, in Rust for that. I, 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 I think you, you need to have an understanding of the specific file system, because uh, Jan was saying, you know, you, you, there are particular locks. So you need to know that that lock is taken during the reclaim path. And, and at that point, you know, I mean, you can annotate the lock in advance, right? Because Let's assume we, we, we come up with a way to annotate, to annotate the lock. You can annotate it to say, I know this lock is taken in a reclaim context. Doesn't prevent us from getting stale, right? Like, if, if we then change how reclaim is done in that file. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Well, okay, but lock depth can't say, actually, this lock is never taken in reclaim context. Oh, yeah, it's one way. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, yes, one way, yes, absolutely. <laughs> So I suppose one, idea, one possible idea would be to be conservative, and then when we are in some file system context, no, no, see, uh, conservative in this sense, right? We enter the, the scoped uh, mode, uh, and then you'll suffer the performance uh, cost of that, and then you have the option to uh, uh, say that you don't want to be in the NoFS context in those cases, right? So it's like a negative uh, um, statement rather than a positive one. 
so I mean, there, there are places where, where we do say in the page cache, oh, I've, I've locked this page, and now I'm going to insert another page into the page cache, and that might cause memory allocation. So we do actually t um, go into no reclaim context in the page cache, and then we call into the file system from there. So in, yeah. from some entry points, the file system actually doesn't need to go into its own NoFS context because it's already been done for it. But because we nest it, it can. So yeah. It's even more complex than that when you start looking at things like uh, loopback file systems. Uh, loopback I.O. that comes from the loopback device is always under GPFS no, no, G, GPF NoFS. Um, it's already taken uh, memo with no save um, because it's uh, in the I.O. path, and so it's operating actually under no I.O. context, and then it enters the file system. So. You can't really say at any point in time, are we in uh, 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 a situation that we must take uh, uh, no offence um, or we must do something no offence. The whole point of the scope contest is you're not supposed to know that or care about it except for the exact context in which you're going to do your next operations. Um, if there's something higher level going on that might actually have done the recursion for you already, it's supposed to have already done that uh, scoping for you. It's only when what you're going to do next needs or might recurse or needs scoping, but you can't tell if you're already operating under that scope or how many higher layers above you have already set those scopes. So you um, know that from now on you need it. Um, yeah. You may not know that somebody already... That's right, it. exactly, yeah. 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 Um, so it, looking at it just as a particular, at this point in time we know that we, we need scoping, yeah, that's great. But you can't then say if we are already scoped or, or infer on scoping from that perspective. So you've really just got to think of it like you're already thinking of the, the NoFS flag is in this particular set of code, is there a recursion problem? And if there's a recursion problem, you have to set NoFS. Um, and it's so the same thing. Like Most of XFS runs under NoFS. I don't think we actually have any GFP NoFS flag called set anymore in XFS at all. Everything runs under scoping. Um, and one of the problems that we did have, there were lots of NoFS calls, and part of the reason for that was to prevent LockDep false positives, because LockDep has no clue in code that be called from both a GFP kernel safe context and a GFP in a context that needs GFP NoFS because it can recurse, or we're holding locks and so it can't recurse. And in those cases, uh, LockDep would always report a, 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 a locking failure, a recursion that shouldn't have occurred in the case where it's actually safe. So we were using GFP NoFS in situations where we didn't actually need to, and the only reason for doing that was to shut up LockDep. We just that, get false positives you're, you're everywhere. Pardon? Is that because your shrinker is using trilog? No, 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 that's simply because, uh, say for example, we have a, 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 a function in the Xatra code that is used on lookup, which isn't in a transaction context, so we can do GFP kernel allocations, but it's also used when we're doing an Xatra modification to look up the B tree, and in that case, we can't recurse because we've got a transaction context active, um, and we can't nest transactions, otherwise we deadlock. Um, yeah, but what's preventing the nesting? What's that? What's preventing the nesting if not GFP no FS? Or are you... No, no, so uh, what's preventing the, the nesting? No, uh, basically the, the, the context is now prevent, you know, that's the code, the allocation gets GFP no FS from the context, transaction context. You said there were cases where you didn't need it, but you were setting this because of yeah. lockdown. Yeah, lock well, yeah, that we were setting that because uh, when you run reclaim, um, it takes inode locks in XFS because we might be doing things like uh, you know, uh, reclaiming free space after end of file or doing other things like that in the actual reclaim paths when we're reclaiming the inode. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of situations where LockDep can give you false positives because it doesn't know that above reclaim, inodes can only be used when they're referenced and below reclaim, inodes are only accessed when they've got no references. So you can't 
actually reference the same uh, inode above and below reclaim. And, and so things like that, Loctep doesn't know about those things. And so we're using GFP, GFP NoFS to avoid Loctep from falling into that hole. That's, that's my idea. So that's what we've got the GFP no Loctep flag for now. We and so... Better ways of expressing things like that. To yeah. Loctep. Well, that GFP no Loctep yeah. now exists. The problem <laughs> we've got now that we're using that, and that was a recent change that we did, we've got several regressions in cases where code like uh, KV malloc doesn't understand GFP no lockdown. So KV Malik in certain situations would now throw out these false positives because it's now, you know, it sees we can go through that path both in, in Should both GFP situations. No lockdown be a, a memoloc flag? What's that? Should GFP no lockdown be a memoloc flag? It's, it goes to K Malik, it goes to KV Malik, it goes to KC Malik. It's, any, it's a GFP flag that you, you know. Yeah, yeah, but it, but should it be a scope thing like the other PF metalloc flags? Because per HC yeah. Perhaps, but in you know that, well, that one seems like a weirder one that maybe it does really need to call that, that, that that's dependent on the context in which it's being called yeah, directly. Yeah, so yeah. Um, so I mean there, there are situations even though you're using scope, you've still got to be very aware of what the calling contexts for the code are. And the calling context for you know, shared code can be different and come in through different scopes. Um, and the tools that we have don't always pick that up. Um, so, you know, it's complex. <laughs> Should we also mention GFP no fail? Yeah, uh, G GFP no fail. Yeah, that, that was coming up. Uh, some people were wanting to make all allocations GFP no fail. Uh, I was pretty adamantly against that one because I don't think we can just safely get rid of error paths. There are lots of reasons why we might need those error paths in the future, not just the memory allocator, allocator not being able to satisfy the allocation. But uh, there's right now a two-page limit above which GFP no fail will warn. I don't think that that really needs to be there. And GFP no fail is really providing the same semantics as a mempool, but without the dedicated mempools. And if we trust reclaim, and if we trust our watermarks, I've been starting, starting to wonder if we actually need dedicated mempools, and we might instead be able to just switch to GFP no fail. This is a point where you need a real memory management person in the room and not me. I, we, yeah. we, we did at one point talk about making this a joint yeah. session, yeah. and I feel if we're going to get, well, go down as, this path, we should have done it. file system people are the people who actually use mempools and arguably understand Reclaim better than the actual memory management people. So <laughs> let, let, Let's not descend into tribalism um, here. The, the, the mempool case uh, can't be replaced with GFP no fail because GFP fail does not give you the forwards progress guarantee that a mempool does. You see, when you, with the particular object that you're allocating, when it's finished with and freed, it goes back into the mempool, and so the thing that's waiting on the mempool is then guaranteed to have forward progress. So it's one in, one out, one in, one out. Uh, with uh, GFP no fail, when the thing that's finished with the memory, it goes back into the general memory pool, and there's no guarantee that the thing that needs it will get that. And so there's no guarantee of one in, one out, one in, one out. Uh, correct. However, that really only comes into play in extremely, uh, in very extreme situations, and in practice, we don't see like normal GFP kernel allocations failing. And we, we've got watermarks. Right. So, so the mempools are typically used in the I/O path, where it's in the GFP no I/O context. Yeah. Um, and so mempools probably aren't needed for GFP kernel allocations, but stuff that we actually do need a forwards progress guarantee for things like swap um, and so on, that's where the mempools are actually really required. Um, and I'm, like I said, we might be able to get away with it, but I, I wouldn't want to even try and prove that uh, the GFP no fail is a replacement for a mempool. I, I just don't see how we can do that. I'm just throwing it out there because I think it might be worth playing around with like as a config option, not something that we would want to do unilaterally. Uh, and also we've got memory allocation profiling landing, and I'm very curious once that lands, how much memory is actually stranded on all of our mempools. So, 
Just on no fails, uh, Kent said doesn't want to remove error paths and so on because they might be needed in the future. There's something that I uh, thought of this morning, we were actually talking, I can't remember who to, but there is actually an interesting aspect to making the memory allocator GFP no fail for you know, slab allocations, for small allocations, and that is that it removes uh, the ability for null pointer dereference uh, bugs. You know, so unchecked error handling, stuff like that. It just removes that whole class of uh, essentially security bug. Um, because a null point of dereference is essentially an exception. It's potentially exploitable um, through any mechanism, any number of mechanisms. And so making GFP no fail, uh, uh, making the memory allocation GFP no fail actually has security, you know, secure development implications it, because it removes that particular class of bug from the general kernel code. Um, so regardless of error paths, error testing or anything like that, there's actually that consideration as well. And I don't think anybody's brought that up in the past. Or, or we could just make all of our memory allocation code error paths much easier to test. And I'm posting the code for that again in just a couple of weeks because the prereqs for that are part of memory allocation profiling, which is finally getting merged. Uh, what's coming is... Uh, that doesn't stop bugs. No, but we'll be able to test all those error paths much, much easier. Uh, the error uh, fault injection framework that I'm posting adds fault injection points per memory allocation call site, and you can flip those on for just your module. So this is why I introduced the BPF error injection stuff is because I got tired of this like YOLO random fail memory and figure it out. So I have, there's sets of scripts in, um, in the actual like shipped stuff. There's a error injection thing with the uh, BPF scripts that you can, um, basically it says, these are the paths that I care about and I'll go through it or this is my module and it will remember what it's tested and then you can like, what I do is I run FS test and I say, ch yeah. catch all the memory yeah. allocation failures. And so every single path that we do in memory allocation, it fails it and validates that it works and it goes, okay, it worked, do the next one and it just does this. Yeah, and the basic idea there is that you can select which call sites, for example, only in the, in the code that you're responsible for testing. Right. Like it's it's completely impractical to just fail memory allocations at random, but you can do it in just your code. Right. Yeah. That's that's the whole reason of the BPF inject, error injection stuff, and this is why you know cool. ButterFS has specific sites for other things where you can label as error injection, and this is why is because we systematically test all of our um, error paths. It's similar to what I know XFS had something like this before BPF existed, um, but yeah, like there's. The BPF stuff works really, really well. Like, yeah. like I said, we systematically test air, um, all I/O paths and all memory paths. Yeah, code coverage analysis to see which paths you're missing and error injection are things that we should all be more aware of and, and pushing to use more. Oh yeah. Uh, we have none of that stuff in the VFS, and so every time, and so far I have abstained from adding any of them. But every time I'm, I'm adding new APIs, like I'm basically as in custom error injection paths, uh, then test it, then remove it, and send it out. <laughs> uh, are we done? OK, so after the coffee break, uh, I, I'm just, I, I don't think we've really come to any conclusions about what our path forward is, unfortunately. But oh. it, I mean, <laughs> everyone seems interested. It's just no, no, no one seems to have a great. So, you know, I'll go off and I'll have a think about this and I'll come up with some kind of concrete proposal that you can all shoot holes in. I mean, if, if the proposal is 
stop using GFP and NoFS and replace it with these things, then great. I mean, like, okay, like that's the plan. Then uh, now that I know that's the plan, then we can start doing. It's like the Folio stuff, right? Like ButterFS isn't fully converted, but every time we go and touch anything, that we just also change it to Folios while we're doing other things. So now that we know, we'll just do that, right? That's a great path forward. Thank you. All right, thanks, man. Okay, mate. cool. So after coffee break, we have Luis talk on um, unbuffered IO improvements, measurements, and then hurry back to Christian's talk about dropping uh, page cache.